This conference will now be recorded. To the number of harmonics that can be eliminated, right? Number of pulses that are produced for one cycle of preference to the number of harmonics that can be eliminated. So as the as more number of pulses, uh, if more number of pulses are produced for one cycle of preference, more number of harmonics will be eliminated. Now, how do we produce more number of pulses for one cycle of preference? It is nothing but how far fast you are able to sample the reference. Now, sampling of reference is done by carrier. So, if the carrier frequency is high, I'll be able to produce more number of pulses per half cycle. So, if the carrier frequency is high, I'll be able to sample more number of times reference. Right. So, directly the output harmonics are related to the carrier frequency. Right. I repeat it once again. This is a very important point as far as inverters or PW techniques is concerned. The number of pulses produced in one cycle of reference directly affects the harmonics in the output. More the number of pulses produced, less is the harmonics. Or, or harmonics will be shifted to the higher order. Right. In actually in inverters, the harmonics are not directly eliminated. Harmonics are just shifted from lower order to higher order. Right. I repeat it once again. An inverter, the harmonics are not directly eliminated, but the harmonics are shifted from lower order to higher order. And the as the, 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 the highest frequency to which they are shifted depends upon the number of pulses that are existing in the output. Right. So as the carrier frequency increases, the harmonics are shifted to higher order. Right. If the harmonics are shifted to higher order, now what is the advantage if the harmonics are shifted to higher order? Right. If the frequency is high, we know that the inductive reactance XL is equal to 2 pi F. If the frequency is high, the inductive reactance will be high and they can be easily filtered out. Right. Even the load inductance itself will be sufficient to filter out the harmonics. So if I go for selecting higher carrier frequency, I'll get more number of pulses in the output and the harmonics from lower order will be shifted to higher order. Right. So if I take a normal square wave inverter, the harmonics will be the predominant harmonic. That is a harmonic which is nearest to the fundamental. It is called predominant harmonic. It is a third harmonic for single phase and it is fifth harmonic for three phase. Square wave inverter, I am saying. About. So if I go for multi level inverters, the lowest harmonic or the predominant harmonic depends upon the carrier frequency or it depends upon the modulation index, frequency modulation index. Right. So if it, so the harmonic order will be directly depending on the modulation index. So now the lowest harmonic will be at MF order. MF order. It will be at the side bands or at in relation with MF. Right. Right. If I am taking MF, let us say I am taking the ratio of MF to uh, reference frequency is 21. If I am taking the ratio of that is 21 times carrier frequency is faster than reference frequency. So if I take it to be 21, then the predominant harmonic or the lowest harmonic will be shifted to 21 times the fundamental. That is 21. In our case, the fundamental is generally 50 hertz. So 21 into 50 will be 1050 hertz. So your lowest frequency, the, the harmonic will be at 1050 hertz. So I can use a very low size filter and I can eliminate the uh, harmonics and can produce nearly sinusoidal waveform. So uh, this is a normal uh, two-level inverter, three-phase two-level inverter, which you all know, right? Uh, this is how the uh, logic uh, depends. Now, uh, why am I uh, stressing on this is if the carrier frequency increases, the advantage is that uh, the harmonic order is shifted. Thereby, I'm going to get a nearly sinusoidal waveform at the output. But at what cost I'm getting it? Is there any drawback of doing this? Can I go on increasing the carrier frequency so that I'll be able to uh, eliminate the or push the harmonics to a higher order and I can filter out them easily. Right. Right. Is there a limitation on increasing the carrier frequency? If I go on increase the carrier frequency, the problem is that I have to switch my switches at very high frequency. So the switching frequency increases. So switching frequency is directly related to the harmonics, harmonic order. Right. If I go for higher switching frequency, I can shift the harmonics to very high order and I can easily eliminate them. So as I've told you, as the frequency harmonic order increases, the filter size gets reduced. 
right? Reactance of filter is directly proportional to frequency. So the filter size gets reduced. Retaining the fundamental, the harmonics will be eliminated. Thereby, I'll get nearly sinusoidal waveform. So if I want to increase the carrier frequency, I can do it at the cost of switching frequency. And we all know if I'm switching at a very high frequency, the problem is that the switch has to be turned on and turned off at very high frequencies. If I switch turn on and turn off the switches at very high frequencies, the switch is shifting between what and what? It is shifting the voltage between VDC to zero or plus VDC and minus VDC. ಡಿಸ್ಕನೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ uh any of uh, i have turned off my video i think it's not necessary any anyway. uh, so uh, because so that the data will be consistent now uh now coming to uh switching frequency uh, so if the switching frequency is high the switches are prone to very high switching stress very high switching stress and also when you are when we are going to medium voltage level or high voltage levels the switching rating the switching losses switching stress will be so high that uh the switches will not be able to bear and uh, uh, the the switching losses and there will be efficiency of the converter comes down so this is the reason why we have to search for alternatives we have to search for alternatives so this the basic problem with this two level inverter if you want a very pure sinusoidal output waveform or if you want to have a control over the output voltage and frequency for high and medium voltage levels a two level inverter will not be able to bear the load of high switching stress and also uh, high uh, what high switching stress and also high switching losses so whenever the switching losses are high again the entire uh, mechanism changes we need to employ mechanism to cool the inverter otherwise the inverter lifetime comes down right so the cooling mechanism the size of the inverter everything goes uh, have up so uh, so to prevent this we need to search for alternatives so before uh, going to the alternatives let's let's still diagnose further so that unless we have the solid fundamentals of how two level inverter have been uh, analyzed uh, we will not have a clarity on multi level so let's check now each leg as we already discussed has two levels of output voltages as i told you the different voltages possible in a single leg of inverter decides the, num- the level of inverter so here only two levels of voltage possible if i close a top switch i have got vao to be equal to plus vdc by 2 if i close a bottom switch i have got it to be minus vdc by 2 so only two levels of voltages are possible that's why it is called two level now how many different switching states are possible now what do you mean by different switching states different switching state is nothing but how many combinations are possible in this switches right so how many possibilities if i turn on and turn off the switch there are two possible so such such there are six switches here so how many possibilities are there so if you take a single leg there are only two possibilities so such there are three legs uh, if i use my basic mathematics and apply permutations and combinations i'll see that i'll get 2 to 4 of three combinations that is eight different switching combinations are possible right eliminating one uh, in each leg that is uh, the common short circuit right that should be eliminated so there are two possibilities in a single leg such three legs are there so in a three phase inverter right i'll be getting 2 to the power of 3 that is eight switching states now eight switching states are going to give me eight different 
possible output voltages right so if i extend the same logic to a n level inverter because we are going to discuss about multi level inverters if i am going to do from same for the n level inverter i am going to get n different possible voltages in a single leg so an n level inverter is going to give you and there are three such legs n cube possibilities i can get n cube possibilities of output voltages are each switching state is going to end up give us uh, a different output voltage so n cube possible uh, of course leaving the redundancy we'll discuss about the redundancy later so n cube possible switching states right so if i take three level inverter three cube that is 27 different output voltages uh, switching states are possible right so similarly five level five cube five cube in the sense now five cube in the sense 125 possibilities are there now what this possibilities indicate to us now what are these possibilities what is this possibility indicates to us now let's analyze this possibility in terms of the space vector diagram so i'm not uh, the space vector diagram is uh, if i add these three terminal voltages a phase b phase c phase voltages it will lead to a rotating space vector right uh, you might have learned the uh, concept of rotating magnetic field concept in induction motor right whenever three phase voltages sinusoidal uh, uh, phase voltages are added it gives a rotating magnetic field it can be shown as a rotating phasor so similarly if i add these three voltage voltages for this possible eight switching states i'm going to get this phasors right but this phasor is fixed right so if you see there are six vertices this is a hexagon and there are six vertices vertices and all the six vertices are six different possibilities of switching states now uh there are two more switching states what are those two more switching states i think most of you know those two switch, switching states are called inactive states or zero states these six switching states are called active states right so inactive states uh inactive states or zero states are not going to give you any finite output voltage therefore they are zero and they are at the vertex of the uh they are the, at the center of the uh second so these are there are six different possibilities if you observe here now uh so so one zero zero i think i need not say one stands for if the top switch of a particular leg is on then that leg uh, the, the, the the status of the leg is defined as the status of the top switch if the top switch of the particular leg is on it is given one if it is off it is given zero so the status of the leg uh, of a leg is defined based on the top switch not the bottom because the bottom switch is obviously the complement so if i say one zero zero that means to say that s1 is on s3 is off s5 is off all right the counterparts are complement i think you will know right if s1 is on s4 is off s3 is on s6 and s2 are also on so it's the same way so 100 so there are only six possibilities that are possible in this two level inverter only six possibilities right so if this uh, if i want to produce a reproduce a sinusoidal waveform sinusoidal waveform if i see three phase sinusoidal waveform it is nothing but a three phase rotating phasor it is a continuous rotating phasor you can see this us star is the reference which i want to reproduce by using the six switching states right these six switching states are used to reproduce this rotating phasor continuously right this rotating phasor will be continuously rotating or this reference output which i want to produce will be continuously rotating because it's a three phase sinusoidal waveform so i need to sample it sample if i sample it at a particular sample sampling time sampling instant i assume it to be constant it is fixed i i sample it and i reproduce it by using the 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 uh, the, uh, the corresponding uh, uh, phasors or corresponding switching vectors of that sector right so as it continuously rotates at every time i sample it and in, in whichever sector it is placed uh, in that corresponding sector i will try to reproduce the reference phasor by using the corresponding vectors so continuously this reference phasor will be rotating and continuously i'm going to sample it and reproduce it so if i want to get a pure sinusoidal waveform i have to sample it how many times because the uh, the the, uh, the locus of this uh, phasor will be a circle you know a circle how many points will be there infinite points will be there so i need to go for infinite samples which is not practically possible but here if i take a normal square wave two level inverter i'll be able to sample only six times six points so you can see how far we are when i'm using a two level inverter i'm just saying square wave square wave two level inverter from the sinusoidal okay on a circle i will be able to point only six i'll be able to produce only six points but if i go for multi level inverters 
right? Six point. How did I get only six points? Because I, there are only six possible active states, right? That is a limitation I have. But if I go for multi-level inverter, let us take a three-level inverter. I have 24 possibilities. So 24 possibilities in the sense, 24 possibilities in the sense, I can reproduce the sine wave in a better way, in a better manner. I have more possibilities. If I go for five level, 125 possibilities, even better way, even better way I can reproduce it. And at the same time, not just better way. If, even if I want, I can reproduce by using two level inverter also a near to sinusoid waveform. But I have to go for more number of samples because I have only two switching states in a single sector. Right. So I have to go for more number of samples, which increases switching frequency. Right. And thereby the losses, stress, etc. goes on. So these are the fundamental reasons why two level inverter is failing. Right. I cannot tag the name failing because uh, two level inverter is this uh, is the favorite for any teacher because that is where we start so t level inverter for many applications low level low voltage levels medium power levels two level inverter are doing their job very good very well but when it comes to medium power and high power level especially where power engineers are working and drives right uh, and hvdc applications these two level inverters cannot suffice the purpose so we have to see for alternatives so let's explore the alternatives uh, even my presentation has been stopped. Yeah. Uh, so I think all of you know this. This is the output voltage waveform. Yeah. So this is what I, I wanted to discuss. Uh, in our case, the uh, uh, this was taken to be seven. Right. This MFP is taken to be seven. So we have got uh, the uh, harmonics at the side bands of MF. You can see that we have got this, uh, MF uh, harmonics at the side bands of MF. Right, so uh, so that, that means that all these lower order harmonics were eliminated. There is no third harmonic, there is no fifth harmonic, right? Uh, so all the side band, all the lower order harmonics were eliminated and harmonics are shifted to higher order, right? So don't worry about this THC being very high because it can be reduced by using it. Uh, higher order harmonics can be easily filtered out by using a filter, okay? So, uh, so this is how the effect of uh, MF will be. So switching frequency will be. Higher the switching frequency, farther the harmonics will be shifted from the fundamental right but i cannot go for very high switching frequency for power inverters unlike the dc dc converters dc dc converters are something different because they will not be operated at high power levels but inverters are different inverters i cannot go switching frequency beyond uh, 500 to 700 hertz if i'm going beyond 500 to 700 hertz and switching at very high power levels the switching losses are are uh, accountable they are accountable switching stress is accountable cooling system is account also plays a role so this is about the effect of harmonic on uh, mf on harmonic profile or switching frequency so the conclusions that we can make out of uh, uh, the two level inverter whatever we have observed is uh, we, we know most of them output voltage can be varied uh, i'm just summarizing whatever i've discussed till now output voltage can be varied by varying the uh, reference amplitude in terms of modulation index ma right of course, you may say that it is only till modulation index MA is equal to 1. Beyond it, it enters into over modulation. Output frequency can be varied by varying the frequency of V reference, right? Frequency of V reference. As I vary frequency of V reference, output frequency. The harmonic content, this is important for us. Harmonic content is the output is decided by the value of MF. Frequency modulation index, right? So harmonic content is affected by MF. Now, higher output, higher value of MF, higher the uh, order of lowest order harmonic. You know, lowest order harmonic we define as the um, predominant harmonic or the harmonic which is nearest to the fundamental. The harmonic which, which is nearest to the fundamental is defined as the lowest order harmonic, right? Which is uh, whose amplitude is more than three percent of fundamental, etc. Right? But lowest order harmonic or the most you know, predominant harmonic is the harmonic which is nearest to the fundamental. Higher the order. Higher the harmonic order, lower is the size of the filter. As I've told you, XL is equal to 2 pi FC, uh, 2 pi FL. Right. Uh, uh, so, uh, so what happens? As the frequency increases, I can select a lower inductor size, L size, L value, so that the XL will remain same. So, higher the harmonic order, I can reduce the size of the filter. So, frequency echo unte, the filter size also gets reduced. This is another important conclusion. And higher the MF value, Higher is a carrier frequency and hence higher is the switching frequency. So these are the uh, so limitations of two level inverters. 
to reduce the harmonic content in the output of the inverter switching has to be increased which leads to switching stress switching loss and higher this is another very important effect higher electromagnetic interference effect right higher switching stress higher switching loss and higher electromagnetic interference effect now electromagnetic interference effect i think you understand whenever whenever i'm going for higher switching frequency what happens there will be a radiation that is produced that radiation is going to affect the surrounding communication lines because we are doing the radiation at very high high power also not just at high frequency but at high power level also so this is going to affect the uh, even the waveforms in our own circuit will get affected the digital the control circuit he also gets affected so this is uh, what are the limitations of tool also our aim is to search for a converter which overcomes these drawbacks okay so let's uh, check for a converter which overcomes these drawbacks right so what are the possibilities so the modern converters of course now no more modern right uh, this these are also again two decades old so to overcome these problems there are two possibilities one is called resonant converters right soft switching converters where switches are turned on and turned off at zero crossings of voltage and current across them uh, this and we are not going to discuss but these are called soft switching soft switching is uh, used to eliminate again switching stress and switching loss because the switching is done only at the zero crossings right either on off or both right whichever is possible right and also zero crossings of voltage current or both whichever is possible so this is resonant converter right so our topic of discussion is multi level inverters so what are multi level inverters multi level inverters are medium high power converters where number of switches are connected in series to share the voltage and the output is realized as a fractional steps of input voltage right to reduce the thd and voltage stress on the switches right so what we do is if i am if i am going for a 66 kilovolt dc uh, ac supply right so and when it is converted to dc right so i'll get a very high magnitude of dc right very high magnitude of dc right so i cannot impose the entire dc voltage on a single switch we don't have such kind of ratings of the switches so what we do is we will try to impose on a single switch only once we will we'll divide the input dc voltage into steps and we'll try to impose on a single switch only one step of voltage this is another important thing right another important thing in multi level inverters is we will not impose the entire supply voltage on a single switch right just like any other cases where voltage has to be shared we connect the switches in series we'll connect the number of switches in series so that the voltage imparted on a single switch is reduced so that in the market the available switch can be used right again i cannot go for using semi controlled or uncontrolled switches i have to go for using full control switches so why i am going saying that full control switches full control switches the problem is that we don't have full control switches at very high ratings unlike thyristor or uh, where thyristor ratings are available till 6 kilo volts but igbt ratings are available only till 1800 volts there is a new device called igct right uh, igcts are also available only till certain like 1600 or uh, 2000 volt and above but uh, not very high voltage levels so let's come to the concept of multi level inverter no no this is how so as i've told you the first step is the input to dc supply has to be divided into various steps various steps now how do we divide it into various steps he is left to the topology of the inverter he is left to the topology of the inverter right right uh, is left to the topology of inverter or is left to the idea of the creator right if you want to create a, a multi level inverter on your own the first step you have to do, do is how do you divide the input dc supply into various steps all right that has to be uh, thought of first then once it is divided into various steps next step. so how many different possibilities see here i am uh, explaining so how many different possibilities of voltages are accessible to the output right so here if i see there are five different voltages possible v5 right including all the four, four capacitors it is v5 v4 v3 v2 v1 five different levels of voltages are possible here <laughs> five different uh, different voltages are possible here and and we next is the topology of the inverter has to make it possible to access all these five levels to the output right right in a single leg that to in a single leg in a single leg all these steps whichever we have divided all these possibilities of voltages whichever we have, we have created 
has to be accessible to the output. So you can observe that I have created the source, I have divided the source into different levels. Now, however, levels you want to have different possible, different level, different steps. And then I have created a circuitry to make this levels accessible to the output. So if you take care of these two fundamental things, you can create your own multi-level quota. You can create your own multi-level quota. But of course, there are many practical, uh, but this is at the fundamental theoretical ideal level. This is what is the idea, right? So divide the source into various levels or various steps and make all these steps accessible at the output, right? So uh, if I see here, if you see here, there are five different voltage possible at the output. V, A, O. If I see V, A, O, there are five different voltage voltage accessible. Okay, five different voltage accessible. V, A, O. As I've told you, pole voltage. If I take pole voltage, five different voltages are possible. So if I divide VDC into this among these four capacitors by using KVL, each capacitor will have a voltage of VDC by four. Four capacitors, equal capacitances, they share equally. Each capacitor is going to have a voltage of VDC by 4. So if I take the first node, that is V5, if I connect VA to this, this single pole multiple throw switch, if I connect it here, the first node, I can get a voltage of how much? If I'm measuring VAO, I'll get a voltage of this two times of VDC by 4, that is VDC by 2. I'll be getting a voltage of VDC by 2. If I go to the second throw, that is connected to V4, I'll be getting a voltage of only this capacitor, VAO. What is this capacitor voltage? VDC by 4. So I have got, got two different possibilities. What are those? VDC by 2, VDC by 4. Next, if I throw it to the center point itself, VAO will be directly 0. Right, short, it is 0. Right, that is the third level. Now, the fourth level is if I throw it to this point, that is, it is accessing the voltage 2. Right. What is this voltage? Only this capacitor voltage. What is this capacitor voltage? Minus VDC by 4. Minus VDC by 4. Why minus? Because it is connected. So VA is connected to this. So it is minus VDC by 4. And then last, if I uh, if I throw it to the bottom level, it will be what? It will be A is connected here. So it is A is connected to N. O is already connected here. So it is minus VDC by so I'll be getting five different possibilities, right? Plus VDC by two, minus VDC by four, plus VDC by four, zero, minus VDC by four, minus VDC by two. So five different voltages are possible. Thereby, it is called this is an example of five level inverter. So how many levels you want to access? So many stages you divide the supply into and make it accessible. And I'll be getting the uh, different levels. So if you observe here, this is a kind of from and day, you know, we have to calculate these angles, right? This angles at which they are switched. You cannot switch just like uh, starting. I want V5, uh, VDC by depression. No, we have to switch so that I'll get a definite shape of a sinusoidal waveform, right? I, I think you all can uh, calculate this switching angles. So, approximate the switching angles are 18 degrees, 54 degrees. So, if you observe here, uh, this is taking a sinusoidal shape, right? And uh, this will have definitely less harmonic content than the conventional single leg two level inverter. Part. So, multiple levels are possible, and this multiple levels are going to reduce the harmonics. So, apart from this, apart from this, we also have to ensure another point here because the, 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 the drawback of the two level inverter was switching stress is high. So, we also have to ensure that. Each switch that we are going to employ in our converter is going to withstand a voltage of single step, right? Nowadays, uh, many students are coming up with different topologies, but I call it topologies this question. But there are some fundamental entities which we need to ensure to in, to uh, uh, to start or to design your own multi-level inverter. One of the first thing is you need to ensure that each switch is going to withstand only one step voltage level. If a step is if a, if a switch is uh, which has to withstand multiple uh, steps, right? In this case, each step is VDC by four. <coughs> VDC by four. So, uh, so each switch that I'm going to employ in our in my converter circuit has to withstand only one step voltage level. Thereby, the switching stress reduces. So, the 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 purpose of going for multi-level inverter is not just going to 
not just to reduce the output harmonic content. The purpose of going for multi-level inverter is to reduce the switching stress and switching loss. This is also very, very important. Switching stress is very, very important. Right. So switching stress, if you want to reduce, I have to ensure that each switch is going to withstand only one step voltage. That is, in this case, it is VDC by 4. VDC by 4. So uh, that is another thing. Right. So uh, and each switch is going to operate at a lower frequency, not at higher frequencies. Right. All these are the uh, things which we need to ensure while designing our own multi-level inverters or a new multi-level inverter. So this is uh, this is a basic concept of multi-level inverter. So we are going to realize output as the steps of supply voltage. Okay. So uh, then uh, multi-level inverter advantage of multi-level inverter. So multi-level inverters are going to reduce the switching stress. They are going to reduce the electromagnetic interference of it. And they are going to reduce the total harmonic distortion when compared to conventional two-level inverters. As I've told you, the output is realized as more number of steps. We have seen in the, uh, even in the uh, state space, uh, state vector diagram, space vector diagram, that there are more number of possibilities if I go for multi-level inverters. So as more number of possibilities of switching are there, switching states are there, I'll be getting total harmonic, reduced total harmonic distortion, right? So uh, these are the advantages of uh, going for multi-level inverters. Now let's uh, the popular topologies of multi-level inverters. What are the popular topologies of multi-level inverter? Uh, the popular topologies of multi-level inverter. We all know the classical topologies of multi-level inverters. There are three classical topologies: diode clamp multi-level inverter, flying capacitor multi-level inverter. Sorry, I think uh, the label is uh, capacitor clamp or flying capacitor clamped multi-level inverter. Next is cascaded hedge bridge multi-level inverter. These are the three popular topologies. As I've told you, uh, keeping in view the possibilities, whatever we have uh, discussed, these are the three possibilities. Now, I just want to briefly introduce this concept of multi-level inverter was introduced right away in 1960s. The first multi-level inverter that was developed was cascaded hedge bridge multi-level inverter. But even though it was developed, it has not taken into, it was not, it, does, it didn't take the limelight because of uh, limitations. Uh, of the switching devices then so cascaded inverter uh, was introduced in 1960s later on in 1970s cascaded multi-level inverter was introduced even this didn't uh, uh, flying capacitor multi-level inverter was introduced even this didn't took uh, light <coughs> because of limitations practical limitations but the first one which has taken line light was diode clamp multi-level inverter so diode clamp multi-level inverter was introduced in 1981 by atagi Right, and uh, uh, this has really, uh, this is the first multi-level inverter which has become popular at three level and still at three level diode clamp multi-level inverter has no competitor. So at three level diode clamp multi-level inverter is very popular. So in 1980s, uh, it, they have theoretically proposed in 1990s they have come into commercial utilization. Still we have a lot of problems in utilizing multi-level inverters. Let's see the um, so these are the uh, classical topologies of multi-level inverters. So uh, diode clamp multi-level inverter. So if you observe, uh, these are the this is the circuit of a three-level uh, classical topologies: the diode clamp, flying capacitor, and uh, cascaded hedge bridge. <coughs> in diode clamp, as we have discussed in the basic uh, uh, concept of multi-level inverter, the supply is divided into Two halves or two parts, VDC by two plus VDC by two and VDC by two. The neutral point is made accessible. These are called clamping diodes. Now, why clamping diodes are used? Clamping diodes are used to ensure that each switch is clamped to a single step of voltage. So each step, each switch in this uh, uh, diode clamp multi-level inverter is going to withstand only one step of voltage. That is VDC by M minus one. M stands for level, right? So VDC by M minus one steps are possible. So VDC by M stands for level three minus one is VDC by two. So each step is VDC by two. So the switch rating which I have to take is uh, VDC by two. So each switch is going to withstand a voltage of VDC by two. So, and that is ensured by this clamping diode. If this clamping diode is not there, then uh, this, uh, there, of course there is no path for the charging and discharging currents. And also uh, they'll not, the, each switch will not be withstanding a single step of voltage. So now how different levels of voltage are possible? Uh, 
uh, the switching table is when the top two switches are turned on s11 s12 are turned on what happens a is connected to this plus of dc rail plus terminal of dc rail and van will be equal to what right van will be equal to plus vdc by 2 plus vdc by 2 if that is plus vdc by 2 is first level of voltage right so uh, one level of voltage next if i turn on these two switches the middle two switches i turn off this switch turn on the next switch and if you observe these are complementary s11 is turned off immediately s13 is turned on so the middle two switches are turned on what happens if you observe this is connected directly to this point right a is connected directly to this point a is connected directly to this point if a is connected directly to this point v a and voltage will be zero so if middle two switches are turned on output voltage is zero if bottom two switches are turned on output voltage is minus vdc by two right because a is connected to negative dc rail i'll be getting minus vdc by two so three different voltage levels are possible plus vdc by two zero minus vdc by two and that's why it is called a three level topology and this is only a single leg of this three level inverter if i connect three legs of this kind it becomes a three phase inverter so uh, in a single leg, uh, uh, the phase voltages are going to have three levels, and line voltages are going to have. This is very another very important. Many uh, many people get confused uh, because they decide the uh, uh, levels of inverter based on the output waveform. Right now, we cannot decide. We can decide, of course, but initially we need to have some idea. Right in output waveform, the uh, levels of inverter uh, output line to line waveform, the number of steps. Are different in, in, uh, and in phase to phase voltage waveform, the number of steps are different, right? In line to line voltage uh, waveform, we'll be having two m minus one levels, two into m minus one level. So for three level, what is two m minus one? Two into three minus one. Two into three minus one is two into two four. So uh, so so th that is how we are going to decide the uh, number of levels of uh, inverter a number of levels in the line to line voltage and phase, uh, line voltage and phase voltage okay so this is a single leg of a uh, diode clamp multi level inverter next comes flying capacitor multi level when the, when the flying capacitor multi level inverter also uh, you can see that when the top two switches are turned on this terminal is connected to this plus and we will be having a plus vd sub two if bottom two, these two switches are turned on this capacitor <laughs> we are connecting the same terminal of the capacitor and it will be zero right and if bottom two switches are turned on right uh, uh, bottom two switches are turned on uh, it will be uh, it will be a minus vdc by two okay so this is about a single leg of uh, flying capacitor and the same with cascaded multi level inverter cascaded multi level inverter again the same we will be getting three different levels of output voltage right output voltage so uh, uh, Three different levels of output voltage so uh, this is this is about the uh, uh, multi-level inverters and these are all the single legs of multi-level inverters right if you observe uh, the, the the drawbacks of two level inverters are to, uh, to a certain extent they, they are overcome here right so we are, we are getting the switch rating is reduced and also we are getting a better output waveform or more levels in the output wave right Thereby, I may not go for very high switching frequency as I have done for. Now, let's discuss about what are the advantages and issues associated with this multi level inverter that is, diode clamp, flying capacitor, and cascaded H bridge multi level inverter. So, each inverter has to see um, when there are three classical topologies. So, we cannot expect that uh, one out of these three is better and we will use only this. No. Now, based on the application, uh, one among uh, this is used for a particular application. Right. So all the three, all the th so there is no definite uh, uh, multi-level inverter which stands upon the other three, other two multi-level inverters. So we need to choose the uh, the, the better possible among the two multi-level inverters. Okay, so uh, three multi-level inverters. So let's let's uh, discuss about the issues of uh, multi-level inverters or uh, this multi-level inverters one by one. Now issues with neutral point clamped multi-level inverter. Now, why am I calling it as neutral point? Neutral point clamp multi level inverter. The other name for neutral point clamp multi level inverter is diode clamp multi level inverter. Diode clamp multi level inverter is also called neutral point clamp multi level inverter. At three level, it is called neutral point. Neutral point at a midpoint. Right. Right. So, for three level, a neutral point is accessible.
but for higher level this neutral point is not defined so for higher levels that is higher than three level we cannot call it as neutral point clamp we call it as diode clamp so only at three level i will call diode clamp multilevel inverter as a neutral point clamp multilevel inverter but for higher level it is not called npc we will call it as uh, diode clamp multilevel inverter so this is the difference right so generally npc and uh, dcmi or dcmli are same but for three level we call dcmli as npc right for higher level i cannot call it as npc but i will call it as dcmli diode clamp multilevel inverter so uh, what are the merits of uh, uh, npc right npc is is definitely more suitable for back to back regenerative applications now back to back regenerative applications now where do we go for back to back regenerative applications in all power system networks like hvdc or uh, wherever back to back regenerative uh, regenerative is must and should we have to go for npc because there are uh, free wheeling diodes so, you know, there are feedback diodes they will ensure that the reversal of power flow is possible the bidirectional power flow is possible so uh, of course it may be possible in other also but it's not as good as in npc so npc converters are preferred in back to back regenerative applications right and if another important advantage of npc is npc has a very simple structure now why simple structure because when smaller footprints now why simple structure if you want to understand why npc we call it as having simple structure you need to understand the other converters drawbacks now what are the drawbacks of other converters if you see flying capacitor multi level inverter if you see the primary element that is being used to replicate the voltages is the capacitors you see that as the levels of inverters increases the number of capacitors increases enormously in the case of flying capacitor multi level inverter in flying capacitor multi level inverter the uh, as the number of uh, levels increases the capacitors going to increase when capacitors are going to increase we know that capacitors are very bulky right the two high power capacitors they cannot be uh, accommodated into a uh, single ic or a kind of i cannot fabricate it as a, a smaller component so that is a problem with flying capacitor so it cannot be packaged easily that is a major drawback of flying capacitor it cannot be packaged easily because we have more number of capacitors as the level of inverter increases so uh, but if you take diode clamp multi level inverter there is no bulky element there are no there are no as such there are no bulky elements this also is taken as a source <coughs> capacitor there are no bulky elements inside the circuitry inside the converter circuit so the packaging of uh, this is easier when compared to the others and here uh, you may say that uh, why not uh, uh, this uh, cascaded multi level inverter the problem with cascaded multi level inverter is i have to use multiple sources multiple dc sources and that to isolated dc sources multiple isolated dc sources if you want then you have to use a transformer right you have to use a transformer that makes it bulky so uh, so this is the this is the advantage of diode clamp multi level inverter they can be easily packaged they can be easily packaged so uh, that is the advantage of diode clamp multi level inverter so and also the uh, voltage stress the each switch is going to withstand the same voltage stress so the, these are the advantages of uh, a diode clamp multi level inverter now what are the demerits see my focus is more on demerits because advantages anyhow we can uh, go through what are the demerits of uh, uh, neutral point clamp multi level neutral point clamp uh, converter <coughs> or diode clamp converter see for high level converter these are these are less attractive why these are less attractive because there is a disproportion in uh, sharing the source current if you observe when the switch is off uh, for for inner levels inner level and if i want to produce zero voltage level or plus vdc by 2 voltage level both the cases the switch s12 is turned on for both these cases s12 is turned on but s11 is turned on only when i want the highest voltage level that is plus vdc by 2 but s12 is turned on both when plus vdc by 2 is required and also at zero level and also zero level so if you observe the loading on s11 is less than the loading on s12 loading on s11 or if i take calculate the average current the average current that this s11 has to withstand is less when compared to s12 so the inner switches have to be designed for more current rating and the outer switches have to be designed for less current rating so this is another major drawback 
right? So if you observe here, as a, I'm going to, I'm repeating this. If you observe, either for the inner voltage level or for the outer voltage level, the top, the inner switch has to be turned on, right? If I want to get plus VTC by two, S11 and S12 both have to be turned on. If I want to get only zero level, S11 is turned off, but S12 is turned on. So S12 is turned on both for inner levels and the outer level. So the as uh, so as the switch goes to inner of the topology inside the topology, the switch is employed inside the topology. It has to bear more current rating, right? So there is an unequal sharing of current. So what happens if there is an unequal sharing of current? What happens if there is an unequal sharing of current in semiconductor devices? All of you recollect what happens in the case of uh, SCR, hot spot formations, etc. You remember, right? So what happens if there is unequal sharing of current? Obviously, the one which is sharing more current uh, will have <coughs> will get heated up and it is going to get overburdened because they have negative temperature coefficient of resistance and ultimately it gets damaged. So that is the problem with the diode clamp ventilator motor, unequal sharing of currents. So this unequal sharing of current becomes more or more effective as a switch goes into the, is employed inside the topology. Right, because I'm just taking a three level inverter. If I take a five level, seven level, etc., uh, there are various outer switches, inner switches. So, how inside the switches into the topology of the converter, more is the uh, load it has to bear. So, that is a drawback of neutral point. Uh, so, unequal distribution of losses in the outer and inner devices. This is the drawback of one of the drawback of diode clamp multi-load inverter or neutral point clamp multi-load inverter. Next. The clamping diodes introduce more conduction losses. Now, what are clamp, clamping diodes we have seen, right? Now, what, what is the problem with diodes? Uh, remember, there is something called reverse recovery current in a diode. So, when the reverse recovery current in the diode comes into picture, whenever diode is turning off, right? So, whenever diode is turning off, right, apart from the load current, an extra peak is added because of reverse recovery current of the diode. So, that extra peak is going to create more conduction losses and also more switching losses. So that is the problem with this diode clamp bundle. So whenever diode is, is employed, when you're turning off the diode, the diode has to, diode will take extra current, the reverse recovery current during reverse recovery time. That, that current is going to get added to the, uh, and it's going, it's going to create overload on the main switch and it's going to create more conduction losses. So that is another drawback of the diode clamp multi-level inverter, right? So, <coughs> so this has to be overcome. Next is uh, another very, very, very important drawback. And this drawback, many researchers are still working on this drawback, right? Because, because if this drawback is overcome, many problems on multi-level inverters can be solved. Now that drawback is DC link capacitor voltage balance. See these, the top two drawbacks can be somehow overcome by using, uh, employing uh, more number of switches or higher rating switches or different rating switches or uh, providing uh, 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 very good coolant, etc. Et but the, 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 the bottom most, that is DC link capacitor voltage balance becomes unattainable in higher level topologies, right? With a passive front end, which using, uh, when using conventional modulation strategies. Now let's try to understand this. If you take this, there are two capacitors employed, right? And the output levels firmly depends on these two capacitor voltages. Let us suppose that we know that every capacitor is going to have some tolerance limits, right? If I am taking every device, every electrical device will have certain tolerance. If I am taking a 100 microfarad capacitor, both the capacitors will not have exact 100 microfarad capacitors. They will be having different capacitances because of the tolerance differences. So what happens? If one capacitor shares more voltage, the other capacitor shares less voltage, is it acceptable? Is it acceptable if one capacitor shares more voltage, other capacitor shares less voltage? Then what happens? Then there will be definitely unequality or unequal steps formed. If unequal steps are formed, the output itself will get distorted. Output itself will get distorted. And of course, the second effect is that the switches are going to again wear different voltage stress. But the major effect is that the output itself is getting distorted. So we have to ensure that these capacitors are always having the same voltages across them, right, right. If, and there may be different reasons why these capacitors are going to share unequal voltages. One reason I have told you is, what, different tolerance, 
tolerance of capacitance is small. Now, all these are the practical problems. These problems are not given by simulation. Simulation just simply MATLAB will not give these problems. But when you go for practicality, uh, these problems are to be considered, right? So capacitances will have different dollars. Next is switches. We have already learned, we have learned in our basic semiconductor physics that even though switches are designed to have same ratings, they will not have same characteristics. If you remember, <coughs> if you remember the series operation of switches, series operation of switches or series operation of SCRs, even though they have same ratings, they will not share equal voltages and uh, equal voltage and also they will not have equal same turn on and turn off times. A switch will have more turn on time, a switch may have less turn on time. So what happens? Obviously, again, the discharge time of this capacitors also will change. When the discharge time of the capacitors changes, again, the capacitors imbalance may occur. And last but not the least is the load, load, the type of load, right? Whether it is resistive load, inductive load, or capacitive load, that is going to decide the balancing of capacitors. So one important thing is we have to ensure that the capacitors are balanced. And there are various factors which affect this capacitors uh, imbalance. One is the tolerances of capacitors, then the switching, uh, switching characteristics, and the third and the most important is the load. So now this, the source of this unbalance is not in our control. So we have to design a new PWM technique to ensure that the PWM technique will sense this difference in capacitor voltage and always ensures that this balance is maintained. So people are working on this. At three level, this problem is solved. At three level, this problem is solved. But at five level, still this problem is existing. At five level or above five levels, these diode clamp bundle elevators are still facing this problem. There is no balance in the capacitor voltages. So the effect of load I'm going to discuss at five level. Okay, the time permits, we're going to discuss at five level. What is the effect of load on the capacitor balance? That will be very interesting. So, so if someone wants to take up uh, as a research problem, this can be taken because there are no act, there are no uh, uh, active passive front end. There are active front end balancing techniques. Active front end balancing techniques means using more switches or using <laughs> DC DC converters instead of capacitors, etc. There are active balancing techniques, but there are no passive uh, front-end balancing techniques. So you can think of uh, this right as uh, one of the research areas where you can work on. Right. Next, uh, this is about NPC. Right? So a detailed review of NPC. Next comes to cascaded multi-level inverters. I think for many, cascaded multi-level inverter is a favorite because cascaded multi-level inverter is a simple extinction of two-level inverter or h bridge inverter, right? So if many H bridge inverters are connected together, you get a cascaded head uh, multi-level inverter. So now, <coughs> if you observe the merits of cascaded H bridge multi-level inverter is uh, cascaded H bridge inverter reaches higher voltages and power levels of applications. Now, uh, unlike diode clamp multi-level inverter, diode clamp multi-level inverter cannot reach higher voltage and power levels. It is generally restricted to three level. I, if I want to go for five level or beyond. We have seen the capacitor voltage balancing problem. So I cannot go for employing diode clamp multi-level inverter for higher levels. This is where cascaded multi-level inverter fetches its advantage. Cascaded multi-level inverter, the advantage is that uh, it is modular in structure. Now, what do you mean by modularity? I think all of you know modular in structure means if you want to add a new stage, I can simply add without affecting the previous stages, previous circuit, I can add an extra module and this will increase or add to the uh, extension of the circuit if you want to extend or if you want to remove i can simply remove a part of it without affecting the rest of the circuit so it is modular in nature okay now <coughs> it enables higher voltage operation with uh, classic low voltage semiconductors no no why we are saying it as uh, because we can go on adding we can go on adding the modules so when we are going on, go on adding the modules, I can go for cascaded H bridge, output voltage same. And if I take a neutral point uh, converter and a cascaded converter for the same output voltage, right? Right. Let us suppose I, I, I'm employing a six, uh, 2.3 kilovolt uh, application. This cascaded H bridge multi-level inverter and also NPC are designed for the same 2.3 kilovolt application. 
But cascaded hedge bridge advantage is that I can go till 17 levels. I can go till 17 levels. But in NPC, I have to restrict myself to three levels. If I'm restricting myself to three levels, what happens? The voltage which each which has to withstand is very high in NPC. But in cascaded hedge bridge, as I'm going for 17 levels, right? Because I have discussed that in NPC, I cannot go for higher levels. In cascaded hedge bridge, I can go for higher levels. So 17 levels, 17 levels, if I'm going, what happens? The voltage is divided among 17 different switches, right? So that's the reason why I'm saying that I can go for high voltage and high power levels. So this is the advantage of cascaded hedge bridge. For higher levels, cascaded hedge bridge has advantage that, no, for high power levels, cascaded hedge bridge has advantage that I can go for higher uh, levels for the same voltage, right? Same output voltage key, NPC is restricted to three levels. But for cascaded hedge bridge, I can go for 17 levels. 17 levels, each switch is going to withstand only one step. So VDC by Right, 16 is this voltage which each switch can withstand. Thereby, I can go for employing a switch of low voltage rating. This is advantage of cascaded hedge. Right, these are all the practical problems. So when I when I go for if you do simulation in MPC in MATLAB, MATLAB though <laughs> that shouldn't be a problem. But when you go for practical, MPC cannot be employed beyond three level <laughs> unless you solve the balancing of capacitors problem. You cannot go for it. So, but uh, cascaded hedge bridge, I can go for 17 levels or higher level. So, what happens is the voltage rating of each switch will come down. When the voltage rating of each switch will come down, I can go for employing a lower voltage rating switch. So, that is a major advantage of cascaded hedge bridge. And also, I can go for employing lower switching frequencies. Because again, lower switching frequencies, because if I go for phase shifted carrier PWM technique, like I think all of you know phase shifted carrier PWM technique, what happens? Phase shifted carrier PWM technique, uh, the, the, with the lower switching frequency, the harmonics are shifted to higher order. Right. So I can go for employing lower switching frequencies also. So this also gives me another advantage. I can go for air cooling. Right. In the case of neutral point clamp multilevel motor, I cannot just employ air cooling. I have to go for some liquid and cooling, right, some other cooling methods which are costly. Okay. So, so these are the advantages of cascaded hedge bridge inverter when compared to the other uh, multi-level inverters, right? So uh, we can operate the cascaded uh, the switches in the cascaded uh, multi-level inverter at low voltage and at fundamental frequency. Still, I am able to produce the higher output voltage because I can go for higher levels, up to 17 levels or even higher. In, in little point cap multi-level inverter, I can go only to three levels. But at three level, this is very popular. In PC. But what are the drawbacks of cascade model? This is very important. I may be boasting that I can go till 17 levels. But is it really possible to go till 17 levels? Because I've seen that many students, many research scholars are going to employ 17 level or uh, very high level multi-level inverters. But what are the drawbacks? See, if you see, it requires larger number of isolated DC sources. Now, how do we produce isolated DC sources? How do we produce isolated DC sources? What do you mean by isolated DC sources? They should not have common ground. They should not have common ground. So how do we produce isolated DC sources? This is a very important problem in cascaded multi-level motor. But it's not that easy to tackle this problem, right? So if you want to go for isolated DC sources, I need to employ a transformer, right? Uh, and the transformer may sound very simple, right? But this transformer is a power level transformer and we need to employ multiple windings, right? It is spread from a phase shifting isolation transformer. Isolation means there should not be common ground between the negative DC rail of all these DC sources that are employed in cascaded multi-level inverters should not be common. They should be separated, isolated. So that requires a very bulk phase shifting isolation transformer, which will have separate windings for all the DC sources, which is very expensive, very bulky. And that's the limitation of cascaded multi-level inverter. So cascaded multi-level inverter, even though it sounds to be very advantageous because of multiple DC sources, we need to employ what? Uh, isolated DC sources, uh, isolated DC sources, that which requires a bulky phase shifting isolation transformer, which is very, very costly and very bulky. So I'll not go for using it. Now comes, Flying capacitor multi-level inverter. 
uh, one thing to be accepted is uh, yeah, flying capacitor multi level inverter. You, as I've already told you, in flying capacitor multi level inverter, we, have, we will use more number of capacitors. More number of capacitors. More number of capacitors is going to always make the circuit bulky and difficult for packaging. Okay. What, what are the advantages of flying capacitor multi level inverter? Again, flying capacitor multi level inverter also is modular in structure. If you observe this, this is the modularity which is going to be repeated regularly. Right. It is modular in uh, structure. So I can just repeat the same structure, right, without actually dismantling the original structure. I can just add an extra module to increase the levels or decrease the levels, etc. etc. So it is modular. That is the advantage of again flying capacitor modular, just like cascade modular. Right. And another advantage is uh, whenever we have more number of capacitors, the advantage is that more number of capacitors, whenever we have more number of capacitors, if there is a temporary uh, power outage, momentary power outage, the capacitors will immediately come into effect and they will withstand the momentary power outages. Right. Right. If you have momentary power outages, then flying capacitor modular inventory is the best thing because you already have capacitors charged. They can produce a momentary power required. So uh, flying capacitor multi level inverter can hold the momentary power outages. Right. So that is the advantage of flying capacitor multi level inverter. And also the fault tolerance of flying capacitor multi level inverter is more. Fault tolerance of flying capacitor multi level inverter is more. And another very important advantage of flying capacitor multi level inverter is higher redundancy. Now, what do you mean by redundancy? This is very important. What is redundant state? The redundant state is uh, we have seen uh, the switching states. <laughs> we have seen the switching states, right? So we, we we call something called redundant state. Now, what is redundant state? <coughs> so redundant means same providing an alternate part. Hello. Not exactly, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Redundancy means yeah, uh, providing redundancy. alternative part for an existing part. Uh, not exactly, sir. Redundancy here is referring to redundant state. Actually speaking, uh, in multi-level inverters, we have multiple switching states, right? As I've told you, in five-level inverter, I have five cube switching states, which is 125 mm -hmm. switching states, right? So mm -hmm. if I say redundant state, a switching state, if multiple switching states can produce the same output voltage, same output voltage, like when I am saying VDC by four, right? If if I have three or four combinations which can produce same VDC by four at the output, then it is called they are called redundant state. Right, so if the same output voltage can be produced by multiple switchings, multiple switching states, they are called redundant states. So to produce the same output voltage, I have more number of possibilities in cascade, uh, in flying capacitor multi level motor. More number of possibilities in uh, flying capacitor multi level motors. So, uh, is it going one way? Do you want me to stop for some time and take questions? Uh, probably, probably yeah. I'm open for questions. If you have questions, please, because I'm, uh, I know that it is going one way. If you have any questions, should I unmute someone or shall we give uh, two minutes for questions or can I proceed? Sorry, as you told, redundancy means it is, yes, yes, one minute. Sir. Redundancy means it yeah, is an yeah. alternative path sir, for an existing path. So that's why you are getting same. So uh, what you said earlier. Mm -hmm. So alternating so, path in the sense you mean to say the correct. So alternative path means uh, whenever the uh, existing path is uh, have any problem, maybe some breakdown or maybe some repair condition at that time. Uh, by making use this alternative path, we can get the same output. So for that purpose, we... No, no, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, one second. Uh, I understand it. See, actually, that is that is the reason why we use it. That is the reason why we use it. But redundancy is not that. Redundancy is producing the same output voltage from different switching states. If there are uh, multiple what, switching sir. states, we can produce... Uh, that, so is, that, is the, that is the advantage. That is what is redundant, redundant state. But why redundant no, no, state is used is, you know, redundant state may be used for that purpose. But mm. that is not the definition of redundant state. No, no. The actual definition for redundancy, redundancy means uh, alternative path sir, for an existing path. Providing an alternative no, 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 means, no, no. Uh, no, no, it's correct, sir. It is there so in, even in, the reliability, in the reliability context also. 
uh, it is no, 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 that is different sir. in reliability no, no, reliability is something different see reliability redundancy is something which but it is it, it is general definition sir it is general definition uh, no, reliable uh, definition for correct sir the redundancy can be defined we will we'll discuss at last sir regarding that uh, if any yeah. if any, please sir, we will discuss at, at the end of the session sir uh, no issue sir continue sir please, please. Thank you. So, thank you. Probably uh, we'll discuss it at the end. Uh, any other questions to be raised? Okay. Uh, how much time I'm left with? Because I'm not accessible. Hello. Uh, what's 40, the time? 40 more time? minutes is there, sir. 40 more minutes. Okay. okay. Uh, hello. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Sir, can we have a uh, cost so, wise uh, Yeah, no cost wise comparison. Yeah. yeah because sir, wise comparison. Several ad yeah, yeah, advan yes. advantages. So, how can we analy make analysis by costing? Yeah. No cost wise comparison again goes with the number of uh, devices which, are, which we are employing and also. The voltage rating or the ratings of the switches, right? So, uh, rating of the switches, if you see uh, in cascaded multi level inverter, we have multiple switches employed, but they are lower uh, uh, voltages. So, obviously, if I go for cost, the cost wise cascaded multi level inverter is cheaper as far as a converter circuit is concerned. But if you go for the overall, overall, including even the source side transformer which we have to employ. The cost gets increased. The cost will be high, right? So uh, if if I take even the source side uh, again because application, right? If I am going for high power levels, very high power levels, cascaded multi-level inverter will be cheaper. Very high power levels because that is that is the only possibility I have for very high power levels. But for three-level diode time multi-level inverter is cheaper. But three-level diode time multi-level inverter is cheaper because it has a very uh, compact structure. It can be easily packaged. And we don't need any extra transformer, like uh, such a bulky transformer as we need in the case of cascaded multi -level. So for three level, that is medium power levels, diode time multi inverter is cheaper and accessible. But for higher power levels, it is cascaded multi inverters, which is cheaper and it is accessible. So this is uh, a, a rough understanding about the cost. Uh, anything else or can I proceed? Okay, sir. Great. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, I'll I'll take questions at the end also. Like, uh, let's continue with this. Uh, so, flying capacitor multi-level inverter. Uh, okay, uh, probably with a redundant state. Well, let's call it as redundant state here because redundancy is a generalized meaning which can be used anywhere. So here we have higher redundant states, right? So more number of switching states are possible, which give the same output voltage, right? Of course, this output, this uh, the advantage of having this uh, multiple uh, switching states for same output voltage is that we can use it uh, uh, for charging and discharging of capacitors, right? So that the balancing of capacitors can be maintained. Okay, uh, so the, they can withstand momentary power output outages, and also they can uh, uh, temporary uh, faults also they can withstand, right? So uh, these are the uh, advantages of flying capacitor multi -level. But the problems with flying capacitor multi inverter is that because there are more number of capacitors used, uh, right? Balancing these capacitors is also very important. So the capacitors, the voltages have to be divided among the capacitors. And to divide the voltages among the capacitors, we need to employ, uh, we need to go for higher switching frequencies, right? So so that uh, as we have to make use of this redundancy. And we have to switch between the for the same output voltage. I have to switch between two or three switching states. For the same output voltage, I have to switch between two or three switching states. So what happens is I have to go for more switching frequency. So switching frequency have to be a high. It will go until 1200 hertz or above for uh, flying capacitor bundle inverter to balance the capacitor voltages. Right. So this is a drawback of. Uh, uh, Flying capacitor module. So going higher than 1200 hertz at power level is not acceptable. It is limited only to 500 to 700 hertz. So flying capacitor multi level inverters are not actually gaining uh, industrial applications in the market, thereby their utilization is limited. So when compared to diode clamped and uh, 
and uh, cascaded multilevel inverter, flying capacitor multilevel inverters are not that popular. They are used only where uh, momentary power outages are are, are uh, unavoidable. Right? In such cases, we go for using it. Otherwise, the flying capacitor multilevel inverters are less utilized. Right? So also, we have to ensure that all the capacitors are initially charged. Right? There are n very very large number of capacitors used here. Okay. So we should we have to ensure that all these capacitors are charged to correct voltage levels each step before starting the uh, operation. So all these are the drawbacks of flying capacitor, and that's the reason why flying capacitor material is not uh, tolerant to use uh, various applications. Uh, so these are the uh, comparisons of various conventional or uh, classical topologies of multilevel inverters. Right now, let's throw some light. Yeah. Now let's uh, throw some light. This is uh, uh, one of the papers written by uh, all the experts in multi-level inverters, many foreign authors, and our uh, own uh, uh, Gopakumar Garu. So, uh, uh, Dr. Gop Professor Gopakumar Garu. So this is this is a broad classification of high power converters that are used. Right. Uh, High power converters that are used. Uh, among these converters, the converters that are important for us for this discussion is multi level inverters. So, multi level inverters, if you see, this is how broadly they are classified. Uh, even yesterday, I think you had a session on matrix converter. Even matrix converter and can be used extended for multi level converters. Right? So, uh, that possibility also have been explored. So, this is all various possibilities that are. Uh, uh, Took limelight in the literature, so I'm just giving you an overview of all, right? So, so multi-level inverters, the classical topologies are these three. That is popular are flying capacitor, neutral point clamp, and cascaded topologies. And there are hybrid topologies. Hybrid topologies combination of these. So there are many topologies that are being proposed as a combination of these. For example, cascaded has an advantage. NP has another advantage. NPC. Source side from source side point of view, NPC is more advantageous because I'm using only a single source. But from uh, levels point of view, cascaded multi-level is more advantageous. So cascaded is being used. So, so why don't we go for hybrid? So hybrid topologies have been proposed. You can see here NPC plus cascaded edge bridge. So uh, if someone is interested, you can explore this flying capacitor plus cascaded edge bridge. Right. So, so these are the uh, uh, few of uh, hybrid topologies that have become popular, and then uh, uh, this NPC. NPC is neutral point clamp converter. So here also uh, we have uh, uh, like a hybrid neutral point clamp converter, cascaded NPC. I think this cascaded NPC is something which open winded uh, loads where the stator of the induction motor and the rotor of induction motor has been fed from two different uh, uh, multi level inverters. So a lot of work has been done by uh, uh, Professor Gopakumar and his students on this uh, cascaded NPC converters. So where uh, uh, open-ended winding kind of thing, where uh, stator and rotor, even the rotor is open-ended and it is being fed by two different multi-level inverters, two different neutral point clamp multi-level inverters. Right. So uh, and transistor clamp multi-level inverter. This is nowadays popular. That is. Three level active neutral point clamped converter and flying a five level active neutral point clamped converter. So these are popular nowadays. So nowadays these are being, uh, this is a modern topology that is being used. And then comes to cascaded multi level inverter. Cascaded multi level inverter launch uh, evolved in uh, multi level inverters are uh, MMC, right? <coughs> Modular multi level converter, right? So modular multi-level converter is another very important uh, uh, topology that has become popular nowadays. So I'll throw a brief overview because I, 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 I'm not, I didn't work in all these topologies, but I've just uh, gone through a brief, briefly through these topologies because if someone is interested, they can really extend this topology. So as of now, the advanced topologies include <coughs> modular multi-level converter and Three level or five level in A and PC active neutral point clamp converter. So these are the advanced topologies of multi level inverter which are popular, which to a certain extent have overcome the drawbacks of the classical multi level inverters. So these are being used here. Okay. <laughs> so I'll just throw some light. I cannot go detail into this uh, converters. I'll just throw some light into. 
this active neutral point uh, clamped converter and uh, modular uh, multi level converter okay so apart from this uh, flying capacitor stacked flying capacitor uh, converters as i've told you flying capacitor is uh, uh, modular in structure so number of stages are stacked together so uh, these are the various multi level converters that are popular so this uh, colors as you see these colors indicates the switches that are employed in these converters uh, red indicates the thyristor based uh, uh, blue indicates igct igct is insulated gate commutated transistor insulated gate commutated so igbt you know igbt so igbt bidirectional so if you observe uh, uh, hnpc or npc because we are going for three level and we are going for high power levels we have to go for igct igct is a high power level controllable switch right controllable switch right so that is uh, the advantage so igct is exclusively used for npc npc topologies so you can see igct is used for npc topologies okay so uh, uh, now it is next let's let's go to some advanced topologies like active neutral point clamp and uh, the others so this is three level and five level anpc uh, three level npc normal npc whatever we have discussed and this is five level anpc anpc is active neutral point clamp converter now what is the difference between a normal neutral point clamp converter and anpc now the problem with uh, the normal neutral point clamp converter is that in normal neutral point clamp converter the we use diodes we use diodes even though here we use a igct it is also used we use diodes to clamp the voltages uh, this is a, uh, we use uh, this is also a three level anpc i'm sorry we use diodes to clamp the voltages right and these diodes have to carry the charging and discharging currents right these charging and discharging currents may not be equal they may be equal they may be unequal it depends on the load right so there is a top uh, diode and there is a bottom diode so the top and bottom diodes are not going to carry the same uh, what do you say same charging and discharging currents they are going to carry different and charging and discharging current this will make the uh, uh, what happens this will make the unequal sharing of currents among the uh, switches right so uh, because we don't have a control over the switches so what we do is we have replaced the uh, uh, diodes right uh, if i i'll just go back to the uh, these diodes we will replace these diodes in the case of active neutral point clamp converter we will replace these diodes with active switches what are the active switches uh, what are the uh, <coughs> switches the the controlled switches are again we use igbts we replace this uh, uncontrolled switch like diode for uh, carrying the reversal and forward charging and discharging currents with uh, active switches or uh, with the uh, controlled switches that is uh, we we use uh, igbts right we use igbts or igcts for this charging and discharging of the uh, currents so carrying the charging and discharging current so we replace them with this uh, so the clamped diodes the clamping is now replaced with this active switches so that we can have a control over the charging and discharging currents so if the top if the top switch is carrying uh, more uh, less charging current we will uh, we will shift this clamping uh, switches to switch to the uh, top switch so that it starts carrying more current so we can switch over from top and bottom switches by using this clamping switches by using this clamping switches so there will be a balance in balance in the current carried by all the switches and there will not be any disproportion in carriage of currents so uh, so that is the concept that we use in active neutral point clamp converter so we try to use uh, we try to use this uh, uh, controlled switches like igbts in the place of what in the place of uh, diodes for clamping so that the charging and discharging current can be uh, uh, modified right or exchanged and thereby the switches are made to carry the equal currents so the distribution among switches is uniform so this is the concept in active neutral point clamp converter so for three level you can directly replace the diodes with uh, the switches diodes with the switches but for five level what we do is apart from replacing the switches we add a flying capacitor stage we add a flying capacitor stage so
So this flying capacitor stage again divides the three level into five level inverter. Right. So five level ANPC is formed by a combination of three level ANPC and a flying capacitor module. Right. We have seen a flying capacitor module. So it's a combination of three level ANPC and a flying capacitor module that is going to give us five level ANPC. Right. So three level ANPC is simply replacing uh, diodes, the clamping diodes with the active switches. Five level ANPC is dividing the three level further. To divide the three level voltages further, we will add uh, extra stage, right? Extra stage that is flying capacitor stage, flying capacitor stage module. So, five level ANPC can be called as a combination of three level ANPC and one flying capacitor stage. So, this is about the uh, flying cap uh, five level ANPC converters. So, I can just give you a brief overview. I want you to further explore on this. There are a lot of control techniques, PWM techniques proposed to control the charging current, <clears throat> maintain uniformity among the charging current in the main switches by using this control switches or by using the clamp switches, right? So, uh, <clears throat> and also to balancing the capacitors. So, uh, this is one, uh, uh, this is one of the advanced topologies that is five level ANPC. Uh, next comes uh, modular multi-level inverters. This is another very important uh, topology that is becoming popular, right? So modular ANPCs, we employ half bridge uh, converters just like in a H bridge. If I take a single leg, it is a half bridge converter. So there are two possible voltage levels. That is, there are two possible switching states here. When the top switch is on, what happens? This capacitor will be connected to the bulk of the capacitors. Bulk of the capacitors are there. Uh, this kind of legs, there are series legs connected. There are um, many legs connected as per the number of levels of output voltage will require. So this is one leg. This is one leg. So such kind of <coughs> legs, there are many legs connected. Such kind of legs, there are many legs connected. So what we do is, there are two possibilities of switching here. One is, when the top switch is switched, what happens? The capacitor is added to the bulk of the other capacitors, right? So that a level is introduced. A level is introduced. If the bottom switch is switched, what happens? The capacitor is not added to the bulk of the capacitors, bulk of the other capacitors. So what happens again, this capacitor will not be uh, uh, falling into the levels. So I'll cut down the level. If I want to add the level, switch on the top switch. If I want to cut down the level, switch on the bottom switch. So switch this kind of uh, single leg, a single leg or half bridge inverters formulate one module of a modular inverter. A number of such modules are interconnected to form levels of okay? a so it is a simple extension of cascaded edge bridge but here we use only a single leg not the complete edge bridge right so uh, here again um, we have to use uh, uh we'll 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 divide into two parts and we'll employ inductors in between these inductors are used to limit the current right if at all there is a high amount of current flowing because of uh, 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 short circuits etc right we we will limit them by using this inductors so uh, this is this is how uh, modular multi-level inverters are formulated. So uh, and also uh, I'm just briefing you out. I cannot discuss the problems of modular multi-level inverters. Modular multi-level inverters also have the same problem of uh, capacitor unbalancing and balancing. So this also again have to use. But we have more uh, what do you say more degrees of freedom to uh, to see that uh, the capacitors are balanced so that we can uh, uh, change it to switching techniques. So as I've told you. Uh, the research is on in using this modular inverters and also to uh, techniques to the PWM techniques to balance these capacitors. Now, how do we balance these capacitors? So, so uh, and also the diodes which are used here, these diodes can be uh, used for bidirectional power flow. Okay, so these uh, modular multi-level multi-level inverters are becoming multi-level converters. They can be used both as rectifier and as also for inverter. All right, uh, so uh, are becoming popular nowadays uh, for in, in the place of uh, for multi-level uh, applications. So uh, these are the uh, uh, this is the module level module uh, modular multi-level inverter. So this is another popular topology. So if at all someone is uh, planning to take up research, uh, uh, you can take up research in uh, designing techniques to balance the capacitors of modular multi-level uh, converters. And also, you can take take up uh, the techniques to uh, 
extend file level NPC to higher levels or the uh, switching techniques of this active switches to uniformly uh, divide the uh, current distribution among the switches. So uh, these are the advanced multi-level inverter topologies. But, uh, I cannot. Uh, so these are this is these are the two level two converters which are popular nowadays. They are being used very popularly uh, in the for research. Okay. So uh, this is about the advanced, the classical topologies of multi-level inverters and the advanced topologies of multi-level inverters. Okay. Uh, so uh, if I still have time and if you have patience to listen, we can discuss about one problem which we have taken up for research that is balancing of capacitors in diode clamp multi level inverter. Uh, I don't know if I still have. Yes, yes sir, you, you go ahead, sir. No yeah, problem. I can just brief you out. I can just brief you out because I cannot uh, completely discuss uh, because uh, this is a file level inverter. Uh, <coughs> Uh, there's a three-phase file on water. I can, I, I'll just brief and I'll just uh, close it within uh, another 10 minutes. I'll close 10, 15 minutes maximum. I'll close. Uh, this is a file level inverter. Uh, as I've told you, the problem with file level diode clamp multi-level inverter or neutral point uh, um, multi-level inverter is that the capacitors employed uh, have to actually share equal voltages. If I take VDC voltage, all the four capacitors have to share equal voltage, VDC by 4, VDC by 4, VDC by 2. Only then the output levels of inverter will be uniform, and I'll, I'm going to get a, a uh, what do you say, a nearly sinusoidal or uh, a, a better waveform or less distorted waveform. So if this capacitor voltages are not uniform, the output levels will not be uniform, and the output voltage will be distorted. Okay. So we have uh, uh, devised techniques to ensure that this output capacitor, uh, the uh, the load, uh, the supply side capacitor voltages are maintained constant, irrespective of the reason by which they are affected. I've already discussed the reasons, right? One of the reason was uh, a few reasons were uh, the tolerance limits of the capacitors, the uh, difference in switching characteristics, and the effect of load. Right, effect of load. Right. Uh, so uh, let's check the effect of load. Uh, in the on the unbalancing in the capacitors, uh, these are the comparisons because we are actually so no, effects of load. Let's see this uh, case. Right, uh, this is the uh, output. Uh, we have just taken the square um, uh, output waveform of uh, five level multi level inverter, so that you will understand clearly what is the effect of uh, uh, effect of load on the capacitor voltages. Uh, this is the uh, <coughs> Uh, output voltage and current, output voltage and current for unity power factor load, right? Unity power factor load where voltage and current are in phase. Now, if you observe here, uh, when I need topmost voltage level, we have already seen that if I need topmost voltage level, the capacitor C1 and C2 will come into action, right? If I want the topmost voltage level, what would I do? I'll turn on all these four switches. When I turn on all these four switches, this entire the, the sum of these two capacitor voltages will come across the load or plus VDC by two, right? And if I want only, if I want only the uh, uh, middle level, if I want only the uh, uh, second level, that is VDC by four, I'll turn on only these two switches. I'll turn on only these two switches. If I turn on only these two switches, I am going to get only VDC by four, right? Right. So if I want total uh, with, uh, full uh, topmost level, I'll turn on all the four switches. If I want the VDC by four, I'll turn on only these two switches. So let's see what happens. So uh, when 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 uh, when the topmost level is being fed to the load, both the capacitors will come into action. When the uh, inner level is being fed into the load, only this capacitor will come into action because these two switches have been turned off. When these two switches have been turned off, this capacitor is disconnected. And only this capacitor will come into action. So the point is that uh, both the capacitors will come into action when the topmost level is being fed to the load. And only this capacitor will come into action, that is, inner capacitor will come into action when the inner level or the VDC by 4 level is uh, fed to the load. So let's see here. If you observe here, when the topmost level is fed, both capacitors C1 and C2 are supplying load. But when inner capacitor is being, the inner levels are being fed, that is, VDC by 4 level is being fed. Only the inner capacity is coming into action. The outer capacity is not coming into action. The C1 is not coming into action. The same happens with the negative voltages. 
when the uh, negative uh, minus VDC by 2 is being fed, both C3 and C4 are coming into action. When minus VDC by 4 is being fed, only C3 is coming into action. <coughs> so, if you observe here, the time for which the capacitor C2 is discharging is more and the time for which C1 is discharging is less. So, as the time proceeds, as the number of cycles pass by, what happens is, C1 will still hold the voltage, but C2 will completely get discharged. After some time, C2 and C3 will get completely discharged. You can, uh, C2 and C3 will get completely discharged, and C1 and C4 will hold the entire voltage. And uh, instead of dividing the voltage as VDC by 4, VDC by 4 among all the four capacitors, now the inner two capacitors become zero voltage. They will not carry any voltage because they are, they are discharged for more time. And the entire voltage is now shared only between C1 and C4. So that the level, the voltage steps now will be only plus VDC by 2 and minus VDC by 2. And of course, zero will be there. So the four voltages now has five voltage levels have now become three voltage levels. That is a three level, five level inverter has now been converted to three level inverter. So this is the drawback. So if you take any higher levels of uh, NPC or diode clamp multilevel inverter, it slowly converges to a three-level inverter. As time proceeds, it slowly converges to a three-level inverter. If I am using a uh, any load other than zero power factor load, zero power factor load Gakunda, If you use any other power factor load, the higher levels will be converted to uh, three levels. Now. Uh, let's take the case of uh, zero power factor load. If I take the zero power factor load, you can observe that for zero power factor, there is a 90 degree space shift. Uh, if, if there is a 90 degree space shift, what happens? The time for which the top <laughs> capacitors are discharged and the time for which the bottom capacitors are discharged will be same. Will be same. Uh, will be same. So, uh, <laughs> so what happens is uh, uh, you can observe here. I think this is actually uh, yeah. So will be same. So the overall capacitor, uh, the charging and discharging are cancelled out. Charging and discharging are cancelled. Here always the capacitors are discharged. Here the charging is there and also discharging is there. So what happens is the inner capacitors still maintain the voltage. Inner capacitors still maintain the voltage. Whatever charge they are discharging, they are also charged. So inner capacitors still maintain the voltage constant. Thereby, in the if you are supplying zero power factor load, the five levels are maintained intact because the capacitors are still charged. But if you are supplying any other power factor load other than zero power factor, the, capac the inner capacitors will slowly discharge to zero and the entire voltage is shared among the outer two capacitors. Thereby, the five level inverter comes to three level inverter. So, this is a problem which has been taken for research. And now, uh, so, so the idea is that we don't want to uh, disturb the uh, disturb the, uh, we don't want to add extra elements. We don't want to add extra elements to the uh, converter circuit. We don't want to add external elements like uh, adding another source or adding extra switches, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We want to uh, define a technique or we want to devise a technique which is inherent, that is a switching technique which can ensure that this balancing is maintained or recovered. <coughs> so, to do that, what we have done is we have taken the conventional sign PW technique itself. We know the conventional sign PWM technique. Yeah, this, this is a conventional sign PWM technique, right? Uh, uh, where uh, the level shifted uh, carriers are compared with sign and the switching is decided for the switches, right? Uh, I'm not going throwing light into it. I think all of you know it, most of you. Uh, so, what we have done, done is the conventional sign PWM technique is used to supply the load, it is used to take care of the requirements of the load. So if the load needs extra power, if the load needs higher voltages, the reference is magnitude is increased or decreased, and thereby the load requirements are met. So the conventional sign pattern technique is used to meet the requirements of the load. Now, <clears throat> now what we do is uh, we add space vector. We make use of space vector PWM technique. We go for a hybrid PWM technique where carrier-based PWM technique is used and also space vector PWM technique. Carrier-based PWM technique is used to meet the load requirements. And space vector PWM technique is used for maintaining the capacitor balance. So we have identified, as someone was saying, redundancy. Redundant means uh, multiple voltage, multiple switching states, which, which will give you the same voltage level. So we have identified the redundant states where the current flow direction is reversed. Current flow direction is reversed. 
right so to produce uh, the same voltage level is to produce this voltage magnitude what is the uh, switching state redundancy i have what is the, what are the other redundant states that are available in the uh, uh, for the phi level we have identified such switching states and instead of applying the actual switching state <coughs> by using sine pedal technique we have passed the sine pedal technique here and we have applied the space vector pedal technique which can uh, reverse the current which can reverse the current but output voltage will remain the same <coughs> so such kind of switching states we have identified and we apply such switching states frequently right we cannot apply more number of times if we apply more number of times the load power requirements may not be met so we have applied this uh, six times in one cycle six times in one fundamental cycle so and for a very small duration of time that is one might but for a very small duration of time we have applied this and uh, so that this space vector is used to maintain the capacitor balance while the sine pedal technique is used to maintain the load requirements you should use to meet the load requirements so it is a combination of cascaded uh, <coughs> carrier based pedalium and space vector pedalium so here by using this combination we try to uh, uh, maintain the so these are the uh, inner because as we go into uh, inner uh, uh, hexagons we will find more inner switching inner uh, voltage levels we will find more redundancy we will find more redundant states we will find more redundant states so uh, so, so we have you excuse me sir used. somebody has unmuted please mute yourself other people don't disturb the so if you see uh the inner hexagons or the inner switching vectors uh inner uh, switching vectors will have more redundancy inner switching uh, voltage vectors will have more redundancy so we, what we have done is we try to take uh, this redundancy uh, for inner switching vectors inner switching we, we have make use of lower voltage levels than the higher voltage levels and then we have made use of this redundancy states and we have identified what which which redundant state is going to give you opposite current than the actual current so instead of capacitor charging or discharging we'll make it opposite right like like for the present instant if it is discharging we'll try to select a redundant state which will make it charge which will make it charge so this kind of redundant states we have identified and we have applied the opposite redundant vector so that uh, for every switching state for every uh, uh, voltage level uh, there will be definitely uh, redundant states which will discharge or charge so <clears throat> that we have made use of and then we have tried to balance the capacitor voltages right so uh, this this is the uh, switching logic we have used right so uh, and then so we we have uh, uh, applied these are the switching states which we have applied and uh, <clears throat> we have seen that always the inner capacitors are going to charge for longer time and outer capacitors are going to discharge uh, so then so these are this is how the current flows this is how uh, the uh, the discharging or charging of capacitor happens see uh, the outer capacitor is discharging so either we have to discharge the outer capacitor for longer time or we have to charge the inner capacitor for more time so so this is a switching state 433 which ensures that the outer capacitor is discharging now this is a capacitor uh, uh, this is a switching state 101 with the, which is discharging the another outer capacitor C4. So C1 and C4 has to be discharged more time, and the C2 and C3 C3 have to be charged for longer time. So uh, that we have ensured. We have uh, this is just a sample of switching states which we have given, and uh, we have seen that the capacitor voltages are maintained balance. So uh, this is uh, for a power factor of uh, 0.8 power factor lagging modulation index one. Uh, these are the waveforms which we have got. And this is how the uh, levels are intact, even if we operate for longer duration of time. Uh, and the capacitor voltage is balanced. So uh, here, uh, the, the duration for which we have applied this uh, space vector was 5.7%. Uh, 
of the fundamental cycle. So uh, then as we go on, increase the uh, uh, PW duration, what happens is we are getting uh, uh, better balancing the capacitor voltages, but the problem is that the output is getting more distorted, more distorted. So uh, for, lo for low pulse width, PW stands for the time duration for which the space vector is applied. If I'm applying space vector for a certain percentage, the, uh, the, there is a uh, balance strike between uh, balancing of capacitor voltage and distortion or uh, <coughs> uh, getting a better harmonic profile in the output voltage. But if I'm going to increase, if I'm going on increasing the speed W, the output is getting distorted, right? So uh, this has been uh, studied for various uh, cases. If you observe, this is how we have got for a power factor uh, uh, load, uh, different power factor loads we have done. And uh, we could get, so if you observe as a power factor moves towards unity power factor, I have to increase the PW percentage. PW percentage is nothing but the time for which the space vector is applied. So as I've told you, the problem is more prevalent as I go near to the unity power factor. So unity power factor, I have to apply more time the uh, uh, PW or uh, the space vector pulse modulation. The problem is that the distortion will increase. <coughs> but for uh, lower power factors, this is doing well. Uh, so this is what uh, the conclusions. This is one technique which we have devised to balance the capacitors of uh, diode clamp multi-level inverter. So uh, with this, uh, I'll conclude. Uh, thank you for your patient listening. Uh, so uh, multi-level inverters, well, like, like this is was this was actually taken from uh, the presentation. The conclusion which I want to make and the future scope is that. Uh, there is a lot of uh, research still going in topologies of multi-level inverters, but I found that many <coughs> many researchers or, or many uh, people or students or whatever, uh, the focus is only on reducing the number of switch count, right? Uh, reducing, merely reducing the switch count will not serve the purpose because reducing the switch count, you have to ensure that the switching stress is reduced, switching loss is reduced, and also we have to ensure that the number of sources will not get reduced a number of sources will not get increased. See, uh, even though cascaded H-bridge has advantages of getting higher output levels, the major drawback of cascaded multi-level inverter is that it has multiple DC sources which have to be isolated. If I'm going for <coughs> multiple DC sources, isolated DC sources, I have to employ a very large bulky transformer, <laughs> which is a major drawback of cascaded multi-level inverter. So, uh, so many uh, new topologies which are being used nowadays uh, not in the literature of SCI or IEEE level, but the the others. Um, people are using multiple DC sources, but we are not thinking from the source perspective. How do we get this multiple DC sources? How do we ensure the power factor from the source when these multiple DC sources are used? Uh, so all these are the drawbacks. And also when you are going for employing a new topology, ensure that the PWM technique, PWM, ensure that the PWM technique can be applied for that one. Because PWM technique can be applied only if there is a periodicity in the switching of the devices. If there is no periodicity, the PWM technique, if in all the classical topologies, whichever we have discussed, there is a periodicity which the switch is turned on and turned off. If there is no periodicity, then employing PWM techniques is very difficult. Again, the switching frequency gets altered. Switching frequency gets altered. Right. So, uh, uh, so I want to take care of all these uh, points and then devise new topologies, and then devise new techniques, PWM techniques to overcome the classical inverter topology problems. Right, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and thank you for your patient listening. Yeah, thank all the management of CMR itself for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, thank you. presentation. Just, uh, yeah, if anybody have the questions, uh, uh, then, uh, we may spend uh, five, to five minutes. Uh, we may spend five minutes on. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. See, I'm open for discussion. And I'm open for questions, but I'm not an encyclopedia and I'm not a master. Uh, yeah. Whatever I know, I'll clarify. Uh, discussion, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, sir. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. This is Bhavan Murthy speaking from. Ah, please carry. On. Hello, excuse me, sir. Are you here, me? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, please, yes. please tell me. Sir, on multi-level inverters and present, on what level the research was going on, sir? Any idea? 
that's what i'm saying see people are going for very high levels but as of now commercially even uh, even industries are finding it difficult to find practical significance for five level inverter right. so it's not about increasing the level uh, of inverters it is about uh, other other problems also right i have discussed about many other problems so we have to not just focus on increasing the level of inverter we have to focus also on the other problems which we have come across as i have told you npc and cascaded multi level inverters both are used for same power levels but npc is used at three level and cascaded multi level is inverted at 17 level but still npc fights the chance over cascaded multi level inverter for that high power level because we need not use a transformer <laughs> thank you sir yeah yeah thank you daddy thank you thank you thank you thank you sir very good explanation thank you sir thank you narasimha rao sir you have lifted the subject from basic onwards so far nobody has explained like you sir you, you clarified all the doubts sir once again i'm very thankful to you sir this is born with from ca market thank you only thank you born with garu uh thank you to head of the department mr devadas dr devadas and thank you sinivas for giving me this opportunity and uh, contacting me. yeah thank you thank sir you. thank you india for accepting uh, my invitation and uh, i have troubled you actually uh, in no, no, your no, it's not at all so you have given uh, this opportunity to us uh, thank you sir thank you very much uh, for giving uh, this wonderful presentation sir uh, uh, excellent presentation thank you very much sir thank you thank, thank you all the participants all the participants are teachers thank you all the participants for your patience listening and all uh, uh, if you have any queries you may mail to me also uh, no problem yeah, uh, i can leave i will i leave my mail id because yeah, i feel it's a learning experience if i get more questions i'll learn more so please whatever uh, question you have please raise it uh, i'll i'll leave the mail id in my in the group so that you can uh, mail me whatever doubts you have thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you all and all uh, thank you very much sir thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you sir